Hi folks, Thomas Simpson here with ThomasSimpson.com and today is another episode of Big Data, Big Questions. Alright, so today we've got a good topic coming in, um, something we've talked about a little bit before, so we're going to talk a little bit about Splunk. And so today's question, just remember, if you want your question answered here on Big Data, Big Questions, put it in the comment section below. Find me on YouTube. Wait, we already are on YouTube. Find me on Twitter. Find me on Instagram. Just, you know, put it in the comment section here below. Just reach out and I will do my best to answer those questions. So today's question comes in and we're talking around Splunk. And so what are the basics of Splunk architecture? And so really just wanted to kind of key off of that and talk a little bit. And we're going to break it down by three different pieces. But the first thing we need to know is we need to know what Splunk is. So Splunk, if you've been watching this, is, you know, it's one of those tools that's out there that allows for you to take machine generated data and be able to analyze it, right? Like if, you know, kind of my joke and is if you can if you can create tables and pivot tables in Excel, then you can easily start ingesting and starting looking and visualizing your data in Splunk. So think about, you know, it started off as IT operations, being able to take in, you know, whether it be log files, whether it be system files, whether it be, you know, people trying to break into your network, right? Like, you know, anything that's going on from your network trafficking perspective or, you know, logins, like all those different log files from all these different machines, being able to put them in one place, be able to index them and be able to view them. So Splunk has been, you know, just an amazing tool for that. Uh, like I said, easy button. I think they coined the phrase easy button for machine data. So pretty cool. So anything machine generated they've been into, but they're also into, you know, IT security, you know, really, if you think about big data, you're talking Splunk and, you know, IOT is one of their, one of their big uh, key features and focal points too. So let's talk about those three basic architecture features. So we're going to break it down. So the first thing you need to know if you're looking to be able to talk Splunk and know what the Splunk architecture is made up of, the first thing is forwarders. So what forwarders are, so think of this, this is a way to You've got a machine running in the edge, you've got a machine running in your data center, you've got one running in the cloud. Anywhere you have a machine or have any kind of device that you want to get data back from, there's something called a Splunk forwarder. So the forwarder is that first key. And what that's going to do is that's like a very, very small file that's running or very, very small application that's running on that device, you know, that machine, whatever it is. And it's just forwarding whatever the information is. So you're looking to forward log files, right? So you're forwarding log files, say that you have a phone. You're forwarding log files from a game or from an application on your phone. You're going to use a forwarder to send that data off. So first, first thing is learn what a forwarder is. We're going to be able to run a small application and send data to our Splunk environment. So number two, the next piece building block for Splunk architecture is going to be our indexer. And so what the indexer is, is it's going to take that data. So we're forwarding those those files, right? It's forwarding that data to the index. And what the indexer is going to do is they're going to put a timestamp on it, put some other information, but it's basically the indexer is going to say, hey, you know, this is how we're going to look for this file because we're probably talking about millions and millions of files. So think about it being able to index it. If you're familiar with databases, you definitely understand. Uh, and if you're a data engineer in the big data world and Hadoop, you understand how indexes work and how you can use indexers to be able to search your data a lot quicker. So the second portion, so just to recap, second portion is our indexer. And now that we've got our data indexed, it's time to move on to the next phase. And in the next phase, we're talking about number three, that's gonna be our search head. And so our search head is how we can visualize and how we can start looking and querying our data. So think about it, we've got our data that's been forwarded from our phone. So we've got our application file or that's coming off of a mobile device being pushed into our indexer, our indexer says, hey, you know, here's a timestamp for it. Here's some other information that we're pulling into it. And now me, the user comes in and says, hey, I want to index that data or I want to search that data. And so I'm using interacting in with a search head that's going to go out and going to find that data and going to be able to help with our queries, but also help when we ever we're using our queries to build out dashboards or some amazing tables that's going to help us visualize our data. So those are the three basic building blocks when we're talking about Splunk architecture. So you have your forwarder, you have your indexer, and you have your search head. And there's a lot of different ways that you can com configure those. And there's a lot of different ways that you can architect those. But those are the basic building blocks that you're going to use if you're talking about the Splunk architecture. So if you'd like to learn more, I've got a couple of Pluralsight courses out there, one called Analyzing Machine Data with Splunk, and then also another one that's building on the Splunk Learning Path for Pluralsight. 
that's installing and configuring Splunk with other courses coming and show you how to visualize that data, how to search that data, and how to set up alerts, a lot of different information. So if you're curious about that, there's some resources for it, but there's a ton out there as well. So Splunk has great documentation and there's other courses and other things out on YouTube that you can find that will help you learn more about Splunk. So I hope, you know, if you're interested in Splunk and interested in being able to use a tool like Splunk to visualize, you know, whether it be machine generated data or IoT, or even if, especially if you're trying to get into um, the more security path, then Splunk is a great tool for that. So a lot of information out there. Hope you found this video very informative. Um, if you have any questions or have any ideas for the show, put them in the comment section here below. But also make sure that you're subscribed and you ring that bell so that you never miss an episode of Big Data, Big Questions. Should get a sponsorship by water. Does anybody know who the agent is for water? Can I maybe get some kind of sponsorship? Be like, hey man, you know, I mean, th th there's those milk ads, right? So who knows? <laughs>